Dwayne Johnson, born May 2, 1972, age 50 years, Hayward, California, United States. Dwayne Douglas Johnson, also known by his ring name The Rock, is an American-Canadian actor, producer, businessman, former football player, and former professional wrestler. The Rundown stars World Wrestling Entertainment's The Rock as Beck, an enforcer for a nasty bad guy named Walker. We first meet Beck in an entertaining nightclub brawl when he takes on a football team's entire offensive line to get some collateral on a gambling debt. His next assignment, the action movie staple last big job that will free him and give him the stake to realize his dream, a restaurant, is to retrieve Walker's son Travis, Sean William Scott, who is off seeking treasure in Brazil. Beck and Travis end up on an Indiana Jones-style quest for a golden idol, fighting both sides in a local rebellion and fending off a pack of amorous monkeys. Rundown is a likable action movie with an almost lovable star. Director Peter Berg keeps things moving briskly and knows how to show off The Rock's charm as well as his expertise at throwing people around. Berg does not do much with the talented Scott or the beautiful and talented Rosario Dawson who is saddled with a dreary spunky girl role and an even drearier accent. Christopher Walken brings his usual weird vibe to the role of Hatcher, local oppressor. Co-produced by the WWE's Vince McMahon, this movie has no aspirations for subtlety or wit, but it's mildly entertaining and, like its heroes, manages to avoid most of the obvious pitfalls. Saving the world takes a little heart and a big Johnson. That was the tagline to 2016's Central Intelligence. And, well, that's just what we got. Bringing the unlikely duo of Kevin Hart and Dwayne Johnson together for the first time was this buddy comedy that might not have made everybody laugh, but it certainly made enough people laugh that it scored bank at the box office, starting off as an overweight loser who becomes a CIA agent later in life, Central Intelligence is further proof that Dwayne Johnson doesn't take himself too seriously. In fact, Kevin Hart plays the straight man in this movie, and Dwayne Johnson actually plays the goof. It's not the most original movie in the world, but it's fun enough that it can be watched over and over again. Plus, you can tell that The Rock is really having a good time in this one, and when Dwayne Johnson has a good time, it's infectious. By now, Hart's signature patter ought to have grown tiresome, but somehow that's not the case in this film. He talks so much in some scenes that, no matter how hard you resist, he wins you over by the time he utters his last sentence. And Johnson is so winning in his awkwardness, earnestness, and general big-heartedness that audiences will almost be able to forgive his lack of range. That said, Central Intelligence has plenty of holes, and it drags many of the jokes out, ruining their momentum. But the chemistry between the two leads is unmistakable, elevating an otherwise predictable script. See it for Hart and Johnson, but be ready for a formulaic, albeit sometimes funny, ride. Pain v. E. Gain, 2013, arguably Michael Bay's best movie, Pain v. E. Gain stars Mark Wahlberg, Anthony Mackie and Johnson as half-witted bodybuilders who kidnap a millionaire and immediately get in way over their heads. This violent, mostly funny film plays like a Coen Brothers script if it were directed by, well, Michael Bay, and his brazen approach gives Pain v.e. Gain a distinctive and manic sensibility. Sometimes it's overwhelming, but usually it's a hoot, and Johnson, as you might expect, steals the film as an ex-con trying not to do terrible things and failing miserably at every turn. Honestly, Pain and Gain might be Dwayne Johnson's funniest movie, which is saying something given that this is a Michael Bay film. In it, Dwayne Johnson plays an ex-convict who has found Jesus and doesn't want to use his massive muscles to hurt anybody. But things quickly go awry when Mark Wahlberg and Anthony Mackie's characters hatch a scheme to kidnap a rich guy, played by monks Tony Shalhoub, and rob him of his loot. The second half of the film is the rock's downward spiral back into his old criminal ways, but it's funny throughout. Who knew watching Restraint could be so hilarious? What works so well for The Rock here is that he's being so gee-gosh earnest in the role. You feel that the dude obviously doesn't want to go astray, but it's hard to stay straight. Especially when you have drugs and strippers so easily at your disposal it's a dramatic turn that could have been a one-note joke, 
but Dwayne Johnson knows when to downplay his charm enough to come off as sympathetic and even a little sad. Seriously, watch this movie again. It's some of Dwayne Johnson's best acting work to date. A group of teenagers get pulled into a video game, and they have to embrace new identities in order to get out again. It takes too long to establish the concept and the rules of Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, but once it finally gets going it's one of the most rip-roaring blockbusters in recent memory, with a dynamite cast, Johnson, Karen Gillan, Kevin Hart and Jack Black, pulling double duty, as both their stereotypical video game personae and the completely different people stuck inside those bodies. The action is inventive, and the humor mostly lands, and Johnson is fantastic as a nerd having trouble thinking of himself as a hero. Dwayne Johnson is very silly in this movie, but he's also very much a badass. That said, it's his ability to make us believe that he's really some geek in the outside world that really sells it. His performance is Danny DeVito in the sequel, but Welcome to the Jungle holds up as the better Jumanji movie. It surprised me with how good it was, and that's not easy to do. The Fast V Furious movies separating them is impossible. Johnson doesn't show up until the fifth, official, entry in the Fast V Furious series, and he sits out a lot of the seventh movie, but he's a big part of what made this franchise jump from a decent series of car racing movies to one of the best and biggest action franchises on the planet. He's the ultimate foil for Vin Diesel's seemingly unstoppable anti-hero, and when he joins the team his heroism makes all these unrepentant thieves seem more likable than ever. And of course, these films have some of the best action sequences around. They're cheesy, they're absurdly emotional, and they are a ton of fun.